Hey, hello guys, welcome back to another video here at the Pages channel. My name is Pages, and I'm very grateful to see that you decided to click on this video today. And in the next following minutes, I'm gonna do my absolute best to help you become a better Call of Duty player. And not only that, maybe one day you wanna become the next scumpy in the competitive scene, or just in general, play better at the pop stomping game out there in multiplayer. So this will help you in general getting higher streaks and performing better in your game of Call of Duty. It doesn't really matter what Call of Duty you play, this will work on any title. So if you like to play the older titles better, or the newest title, of course, with Black Ops 4, and of course, I'm going to use Black Ops 4 as my example most of the time because it's the newest title and probably the most interesting one. And there's also a few things you should switch up from your usual playstyle if you used to do them back in the days to this Call of Duty because they don't really work that well. An example is drop shotting. It's really not effective in Black Ops 4 whatsoever. So if you do that still to this day, you got to change around your habits of playing the older cards. There's also another example that, that I really want to go into that I will cover throughout this video, which will be under playstyle. But of course, I also want to cover everything outside with your controller, what you can do to your controller to make it more effective. This is a normal PS4 controller, DualShock 4, which most of you probably use. That's why I do want to focus on this controller only. A few things you can do to it to improve your gameplay, as well as the settings in-game for your sensitivity, your button layout, and even more that you probably haven't thought about that actually hinders you to become a better player. We will also take a look at your connection to the game and what you can do to your network settings to allow you to have a better connection and don't feel like you are spamming people with bullets but they kill you way faster because be honest how many times have you played call of duty and you feel like your bullets doesn't do anything but they kill you instantly well there's a few things you can do to help you and allow that not to happen. So in general, all the points we're gonna cover are the controller, the settings you should have, how you should think in game, and your mindset, your awareness, your positioning, and all this I will cover throughout this video. And finally, we'll also take a look at your ping and how you can improve your connection to the different servers, allowing you to have a more smooth experience. All this will be covered in today's video. So sit down, relax, and let's start by talking about your PS4 controller. So let's get right into the controllers. And of course, if you do play on Xbox One, don't you worry, you can do the exact same changes that I'm going to do to my PS4 controller to improve your game. So don't you worry if you play on Xbox, you're not left out, you can do the exact same features that I'm going to do right now. And of course, the reason why I'm covering a normal PS4 controller is, as I said, most of you are using this product. But if you are familiar to my channel, I've been covering a lot of scuff controllers over the last few months, and I've gone through a lot of them. And the reason I don't want to include them in this video whatsoever is because they are a great product, and the slight advantage they do give you are the paddles on the back, which you unfortunately do not get with a normal stock PS4 controller. But at the same time, they cost a lot, up to $200, and the quality, unfortunately, isn't good enough. So I wouldn't recommend buying these super expensive controllers because everything I'm going to show you right now you can do on your normal PS4 controller. It doesn't really cost you that much and it's way cheaper and it will not break on you whatsoever. Of course, the paddles, it's not something I can put on. Unfortunately, that's the slight advantage you have with a scuff. But then again, it's a $200 controller and the quality isn't good enough and they might break down the line, which we really do not want to see. And of course, most of you use this thing, so I think that would be more helpful. First of all, if you are willing to spend a little bit of money from $30 to $40, you can improve your controller so much from aiming better and having a better grip on your controller. So let me just show you what I have done. Because right now, I don't use the scuff controller anymore. I use this bad boy right here. This is a normal PS4 controller. I just bought the Army Edition, which you can see. It's more the camouflage color, the green color here. But it's still a normal PS4 controller. Nothing special about it. But what I have on it is what's a little bit special. And both of these products that I'm going to show you right now is from Control Freak. If you've not heard of them before, it's a website you can click on and buy a lot of gaming apparel. Uh, or customization that you can use in your controllers to improve your gameplay. I am not sponsored by them whatsoever, but I love their products and I can hands down recommend them. And if you ever want to sponsor me down the line, that would be a dream come true because I use their products every single day and I absolutely do recommend them. So let's go through them. There's two different things you can buy here. First of all, you can see the grip I have around my controller on the sides. You just put them on, easy as that. You can buy them from Control Freak and it helps you have a nice grip on your controller because if you're a little bit like me, eventually your hands will become a little bit sweaty and then you will be a little bit slippery on your controller and that can affect your game plan. You might have to go and dry your hands or clean them up, which is a little bit annoying. And a little easy fix to that is buying this grip. And of course, if you don't have that problem, you don't have to spend money on it whatsoever. It costs around from 10 to $20. If you're not interested, already saved you a little bit of money right there. But for me, I absolutely love it. Next thing, you probably heard about these Control Freaks. Absolutely amazing product. It's basically an extension to your normal stick. As you can see, they're so easy to take off. There you can see the normal PS4 thumbstick. If you want them extended, 
put in a control freak just like that boom and they're on that's how easy it is and as you can see my right one is a little bit taller than the other one the reason why i have that is because that allows me to get a more precise aim i have more range of motion or movement so i can have a way more precise aim which helps you so much in multiplayer and it even allows you to play with higher sensitivities and still be more accurate so if you have the problem of having a low sensitivity because you can't handle the higher ones these bad boys will help you a lot or in general if you just want a better grip on your thumbsticks these products are amazing and will help your aim trust me after a little bit of use and you get used to them absolutely amazing so that's the only thing you can spend money on that i will uh tip you guys about in this video you don't have to buy them and rest of this video will not have anything with money included but I do really recommend this and I can stand by it 100% and this is the setup I use now every single day. No paddles, no scuff whatsoever. So that's what you can do to your controller to improve your playstyle. Now, let's get into the gaming settings. So we booted up Black Ops 4, let's go straight into the options, starting off with the controls and the sensitivity, which probably is one of the most asked questions out there. What sensitivity should I play on? And this is honestly a personal preference, but what I would say is have a higher sensitivity if you like to be up close, rushy, aggressive, like with an SMG in medium to close range. And when you have control freaks, you will even be more precise with your aim. And the reason why I would recommend a higher sensitivity the more close range you play is because you want to be able to move your aim very fast from target to target, turn around very quickly. That's very important. But if there are in very longer ranges and you want to be accurate, and of course you're going to get shot, you're going to get flinched, it's pretty hard to keep your aim on target in long range then if you have a very high sensitivity where the slight movement will do a lot in game so a lower sensitivity like a 5.5 if you like to be in long range with like tactical rifles lmgs or even ars definitely turn your sensitivity a little bit down and if you play competitively accuracy is key all the time so then probably 5.5 would be the best way to go or if you want something in between if you like to rush but also are in the long range sometimes you can play on for example 7.7 7. i play on 9.9 9 because i try to be up close aggressive all the time so it fits me really well and it also helps a lot with the control freaks Target assist, aim assist, have them on. They just help you aim even better. Controller vibration. Turn this off. A lot of people has this on and it's the default settings when you start up the game. The reason I want to turn this off is because when your controller vibrates, you will not be able to hold your controller as accurate as possible. And if you're using a higher sensitivity, it will mess you even more up. Turning it off will feel weird, but it will help your aim. Sprint Castle Reload, if you want that, you can turn it on. Auto Mantle, you can actually turn on and off. It will be on when you lock up the game or turn up your game. Turn it off because it's so annoying because this game wants you to climb absolutely everything. So if you turn this off, you just have to press X an extra time to be able to climb over things instead of your character doing it automatically, which a lot of times, and it happened to me all the time, has messed up my gunfights. Let's say I'm going to jump out of the way and all, my, all of a sudden my character starts climbing up something to the left here and I am absolutely not able to do anything in that gunfight and the other guy will win. So turn that off. Huge recommendation. Button layout. If you play jetpacking Call of Duties, I would really recommend stick and move because that allows you to jump with your left, no, I mean your right thumbstick right here by clicking it in. And the reason why this is really effective is because you never have to take your finger away from your thumbstick. Of course, if you had a scuff, you would have paddles on the back that will fix this problem. So you never have to take your thumbs away from your stick. But we are playing with a normal PS4 controller and we got to do what we got to do. So if you are a jump shotter, you like to jump in every gunfight, definitely use stick and move. But in Black Ops 4, this is really not effective at all. Because in Black Ops 4 and even Black Ops 3, when you jump and land back down, there's a little bit of realism in here because you jump down and you will get a little bounce with your aim. And if you're getting shot at, you will even flinch and it will be so hard to stay on target. I always jump into gunfights in the previous Call of Duties and it's helped me a lot because I'm harder to hit. But in this game, it will mess up your aim so much that actually it's not even an advantage. What you should do is to sprint, use gun hole. When you come around a corner, you see your target, aim down sight, don't even jump because you will lock onto your target so much faster and kill them way faster than what you would have had if you jumped because you will struggle with your aim. A lot of people don't know this and are used to that from previous Call of Duties to work really well, like jump shotting as well. Black Ops 4, not effective. I know this sounds weird, but honestly try it and see how many more gunfights you actually will win by doing this change. 
for me, it has helped me so much. Because I used to jump in every gunfight. Now I don't. I sprint and I aim straight away the moment I see somebody. Even though I'm running around constantly. And it makes me so much more accurate and win way more gunfights. So, yeah. Then you can choose the option to have flipped. Which basically allow you to shoot with R1 and L1. Instead of R2 and L2. Basically the triggers. This allows you to don't have to put too much force before your gun actually fires. And the reason why that is effective because with the triggers you have to press them all the way down to make them actually do what they're supposed to do. So if you want your uh, shot and your aim to be even faster, you can change it to these two. And a feature you can have on scuff controllers is trigger stops, which makes these uh, triggers not so hard to hit or they stop way earlier than a normal controller. This you can easily fix on a dual shock by just switching over to flipped. I like to shoot with my trigger, so I haven't done this, but I know it will help you out. Graphics, not really much you need to do right here. Audio, what I really like to do is to turn off the music. Because if you use a headset and you want to be able to hear footsteps, the music can sometimes mess it up. Because a lot of the times it will be a little bit louder than the actual footsteps. And through a gameplay uh, on multiplayer, throughout a team deathmatch or whatever you play, there will be music and different things going on. And if you turn that completely off, you will only hear what's going on in the game and not the music around it. Then we have controller sound. I just like to turn that off because I think it's really annoying when my controller starts making sounds. That's entirely up to you. And this is important. The network settings. And what you really should turn on right here is the connection meter. Because if you then go into your game when you're playing, you can then see your ping. And if you see on screen right here, this isn't completely accurate. This game is telling you that if you have a ping from 0 to 99, you will have a 4 bar. I don't agree with that. You honestly don't want a lower ping than 30 to 60. If you have a higher ping than 60, the other players might have an advantage. And those are the games where you will feel like your gun is underperforming. Trust me, I've noticed it a lot of time. I go into the game, I check my ping, I just press start in game, go to check my ping on my connection meter, and I can see straight away that, hey, I'm having a way high ping right now. That's most likely the reason why my gun is underperforming. So when the, when you boot up a game, go straight into your options and check your ping in game in the match you are or the server you're playing on. And you can right away see if you're already having a disadvantage. So a ping from 30 to 60 is where it should be to be optimal for you. Then we have the bandwidth. This should be as high as possible. So around 4,000, which I have right now, is really good. If it's down to 2,000 or 1,000, what you really should do is to plug out your modem, your router, everything. Wait a little bit, plug them in, and this should improve. Because having a higher bandwidth would allow you to have better connection and a better experience online. That's how easy it is. And of course, if your NAT type is open, that will signal for you that you have a pretty good internet as well. That's the tips about the settings. Include all of these. And if there's something here you didn't know, it will definitely help you out. Try them out. And I'm 100% sure that it will help you so much. Now it's time to go into the game and tell you about a few strategies you can use to play better in multiplayer. And first of all are of course class setups and I do not want to cover that too much in this video because I have my own dedicated video series for that where I go in depth with perks, attachments and how to play in game. So if you want more details on that specific topic, go to my channel, scroll a little bit down and you will see my playlist right there with all the different guns and it will be updated more throughout the next following weeks with newer guns. So if there's a gun you want to try out that you don't see it yet in the series, comment on some of the episodes and let me know that you want to see that weapon next and I will cover that as soon as I can. But there's already a ton of guns there that I have gone in depth with and talked about and really given you the best setups possible. So click on those videos if you're more interested in that. Uh, so let's just go straight forward. The next thing I want to talk about is in-game, something you need to think about and how to play, which will really improve your gameplay, and that is something called centering. What centering really is, is where you have your cross here on your screen. When you don't aim down sight, you will have your cross here, as you can see, with those four different lines in the middle of your screen. Those always has to be in the direction you think the enemies can come from. If you go into a room and you know that the most popular spot they can be is right around the corner, move your crosshair or the middle of your screen to the direction you think your enemies will be. Because this will allow you to aim down sight and be on target way faster than other players. 
Other people just run around and use their side vision to see if there could be people on your sides. And they just run into a room and they see, oh, there's a guy over there. I have to turn my aim all the way over, aim down side and start shooting. While you already are ready with your centering, the middle of your screen is already positioned over to the direction you think your enemy can be. And if they're there, aim down side, shoot straight away. You will win the gunfight. So centering is really important and something that really isn't that much covered in videos. But there you know. Very simple thing you can change up your playstyle with. Always have the middle of your screen or your crosshair towards the direction you think your enemies can come from. And with more playtime, you will learn where people usually go. Next thing I want to talk about is awareness. And no, I do not talk about the perk. I thought I talk about as simple as paying attention to what's going on on screen. How much health do I have? How much ammo do I have? Do I need to reload? Where are they on a minimap? These are really simple things to say, but a lot of people don't pay attention to it. Because if you pay attention to those things, you will know what's going on around you all the time. Should I heal right now? Should I reload before I go into my next battle? Oh my god, there's a lot of people on the minimap in this room. I probably shouldn't push in here alone. Because a very, very, very good tip is you should never be afraid of running away. If you go into a situation where you know you most likely will die, run away and find a new way to get into the battle pretty much because if you want to stay on your streak you can't push dumb gunfights so be aware of what's going around you heal ammo all of that and that will improve so much and not only that pay attention to your headset or your audio if you can hear that some things is going on can you, you can for example hear when a nine bang is going to be thrown you can hear a dog running around you can hear the announcer saying that kill streaks are coming in and if you pay attention to these things you can save you a lot of depths if you hear enemy airstrike coming in or hellstorm get inside so you will not get a free death there or a death that will easily kill you because you didn't pay attention because these things can help you a lot because there's so many audio cues for the different things in game when people get streaks when they take out their specialist really really important to use the audio to help you out and don't ignore them and just focus on the game so definitely put money in the headset if you don't have that already because that will really help you out next thing we're going to talk about is also really important and that is positioning which is probably the same thing never put yourself in bad situations if you know you're rocking an smg you should never go for a long range engagement you have to flank around or find a new approach where you can be more effective head glitches are very important if you're running into a gunfight and you know there's a head glitch you can use that your target is not going to be able to use that will give you advantage to win the gunfight so always put yourself in the smartest situation based on where you are or what's going on on screen and as i said never be afraid to run away if you feel like they have the advantage because if you feel like oh i'm not really confident in this gunfight get out of there and find a better position that's basically how I want to cover it. I think you understand it. And you can see in the gameplay you're watching right now how I choose to move, what engagements I choose to take, and when I back off because I feel like I'm not going to be able to handle this. Because in this game, you have a lot more health. You need to think about healing, reloading. So choosing your position wisely is really smart to do. Then I want to talk about your recoil management. And what to do here is basically go into a custom game alone, pick with you your weapon that you want to use, aim down sight at a wall, start shooting, and don't touch your thumbsticks and see exactly where the recoil is going to go because with Black Ops 4 it's a little bit unique that every gun has its own recoil pattern which basically means the recoil will be the same every single time so do that check out how the recoil performs and then let's say for example the recoil goes straight up then take your controller try to shoot at the wall again but this time take your thumbstick or your aiming thumbstick the right one a little slightly down to try to counter that recoil as much as possible and when you see that the bullets are going in a straight line and they don't really move that much you have managed to control the recoil of that gun and then another tip which is really important is because in black ops 4 and other call of duty games there is something called flinch which basically means if you get shot your aim will jump up so always aim for the stomach or the chest area because if they shoot back your aim will just jump up to their head and you will kill them even faster best way to play the game if you of course aim for the head from the start and you get shot you will flinch up and you will miss every single shot and most likely lose your gunfight so even though the head is the most uh, lethal place to shoot it's still also the hardest place to keep in target 
So aim for the stomach to the chest area and you will most likely guarantee the kill most of the time. And as I said earlier, if you do come in engagements that you feel like the other one has the overhand or really has the advantage, there's no shame in running away and finding a better positioning as we talked about earlier. So all this will really help. So awareness, positioning, being able to think, is this an engagement I should take? Just don't be too kill hungry. If you see a guy, oh, I'm going to go straight for him. Maybe there's people still spawning and there will be people right behind them. Take a look at the situation, analyze it, and try to see what the smartest thing would do. And of course, sometimes you will make mistakes, but try to learn from those mistakes and don't do the same thing again. And trust me, you will improve over time. So with all of this awareness, positioning, uh, how you should think, take a look at everything going on on screen, your minimap, your health, all of that. And trust me, you will become a much better player with the centering as well recoil management and with all the tips of the settings and what you can do to your controller with control freaks and grip and what layouts you should have all of this will improve your gameplay so much and i'm pretty sure there's something i've talked about in this video that you already haven't thought about so if this video helped you in any way please drop a like in the video and let me know what you thought down in the comment section is there something i missed let me know and all of this even with your network settings as well so you can check your ping will really greatly increase your performance in game so use all of these tools and ladies and gentlemen you can be the next scumpy in call of duty drop a like if you did enjoy subscribe for more my name is pages thank you so much for watching it's all about friendship over here be kind to one another that's what it's all about thank you for watching i'm out